Hey, Joe Gilder here from HomestudioCorner.com. Here's the thing. Problems are not problems. If you see a problem as a problem, you're going to avoid that problem, and you're not going to get where you want to get. What am I talking about? Let me start with a story, um, and I'll get to the problem thing in a second. If you're familiar with, you may have heard this story before. I actually talked about it on the podcast this week. Uh, when when Nirvana was recording Nevermind in Sound City with Butch Vig producing, uh, they were working on that one song. I believe it's called The Bridge or Underneath the Bridge. It's that really slow, underneath the bridge. You, you know, he's just mumbling, but uh, it creates this really cool vibe. And it's got cello, I believe, and uh, drums and bass. But they were trying to record the song and they couldn't get it right. He was in the studio trying to create this vibe and it wasn't happening. So they took a break and Kurt came back into, Kurt Cobain came back into the studio, plopped down on the couch and was just kind of laying there, barely strumming the guitar and playing. And Butch said, that's it. So they got mics, they set up in the control room, not an ideal recording environment. Um, he was laying down, I think, I don't know for sure, but um, they, they captured him right there playing this, the guitar and singing the song. And then they added everything else to that. So they added the drums and the bass and the cello and there was no click track. There was no, there were lots of timing issues. He talks about having to punch in, you know, one bar of drums at a time to get it right. Imagine doing that on, on tape, uh, a lot of work. And you might think, you hear that and say, oh, that's just ridiculous. They should have just done a regular recording of it with everybody in their place in the studio to a click track nice and clean and proper. Um, you might think that, but you and I aren't Butch Vig, and that was Nirvana, never mind, major, huge album, right? So just because something is more difficult doesn't mean it's not worth doing. Could it, would it have been easier for them to record that song to a click track in a room, and if it wasn't quite the vibe they wanted, just let it go and get it done? Well, maybe, but I would think they would argue that the song and the album is so much better because they took the time to stop and to do what was necessary, not necessarily what was easy. And so they created a whole mess of problems that they had to fix later because they wanted to capture this, this certain way. Could they have gotten a better vocal tone, better guitar tone? Sure. Um, but would it have had that same vibe? No. So in what ways does that kind of resonate with you and your music and your studio? Are you constantly avoiding things that are difficult and hard uh, just because they are difficult and hard? Are you avoiding opportunities and seeing them as problems? Or do you look for problems and then find a way to solve them? I just sent a tweet out at, at Joe Gilder Music that said, Mo money, mo problems. You got it backwards. It's mo problems, mo money. Meaning, if you can, instead of running from problems, if you can find problems and then solve them, that's, that's the essence of any, any, any measurement of success. It boils down to that. Whether you're looking to do music full-time as a, as a business or a career or just looking to make great music, find the problems and fix them. Now, you got to find the right problems. If I'm over here fixing a shaker track that you can't even hear in the mix, well, that's missing the point entirely. But big problems, coming up with big solutions, can do some pretty amazing things. And that applies to all areas of life, but especially to music. Go find some problems, solve the problems, see what happens on the other side. You just might be surprised.